I took the layer last summer and now it has grown very well. So it's time for the first tiling today. This means defoliating, a little bit of this, maybe some wire. And in the end, there will be the first styling of this tree. But let us look at the two trees here first. Um, as you can tell, the young plant has much smaller leaves than the large plant. I think in part of this because the big plant has been fertilized a lot over the last year and the air layer I have not fertilized. The reason I do that is because I want the roots to develop and the less nutrients are in the soil, the more the roots will start looking for nutrients. The original cut side has started to heal a little bit, um, as you can tell, with the big bark growing over it. Unfortunately, this side branch here has died off, so I'll need to do a little bit of work later on. But that's not for this video, I'll do that next time. Before we can work on this tree, I will have to remove all the leaves. And because that is quite a tedious job, um, I'm just going to explain what to do. Effectively remove each leaf, but leave a little bit of the tree stalk, uh, the leaf stalk there. By leaving the leaf stalk in place, you allow the buds that are in the knuckles there to develop later on. The rest of the defoliation is very boring. Let's do it differently. I guess that pack fired. Oh well, at least. Half of the leaves is gone, and now we know where all the blue Japanese maple on the internet came from. Let me try to fix this error. Just a second. So I guess that's better. Um, joking aside, of course, defoliation of maples um, is not normally done on the tree at this stage of development. I'm only doing this right now because I want to work on the trunk. I need to see what's going on, and I want to select the primary branches. And I do this right now, this time of the year, because now the plants are growing, they're very strong, and every carving that I do now heals very quickly, and there's no risk of any dieback on the branches. So keep that in mind, if you are working on Japanese maple, and you need to remove big branches or make big cuts, middle of summer, that's a really, really good time to do it. Downside is, of course, it is now quite warm, and you might have seen at the beginning of the video, I watered the tree right before I started working on it, to make sure it never dries out. This is quite stressful, and after I'm done with it, this tree will not stay in the sun. This tree will go into the shade until new, new leaf pops out. That I normally expect to happen maybe three weeks, four weeks. And until that time, it is not going to stay in midday sun. A second uh, benefit of doing this work right now in the middle of summer is that the branches are still young. They have just started to create wood and you can bend it quite easily. If you now wire it, you leave it alone and after six weeks you can unwire because the branches have set. This tree was uh, sold to me as a regular green Japanese maple. But as you can see, the branches have a tendency to grow down. So it might be a Ryugan maple, but I am not sure. If there's anybody who knows, who identifies this species immediately as a specific variety, let me know. Um, this work, what I'm doing right now, has uh, the benefit of creating lots of light on the inside of the canopy. So although it is not a typical measure to do on young trees, I like to do it every once in a while. Um, so I get young growth on the inside of the canopy. And in the middle of the, gro of the growing season, that young growth usually has tight internodes. And that helps me later on when I'm wiring out the tree. Before any styling of this tree is done, I first go through the whole tree. And I'm using my knob cutters, which are cutters with a twice rounded tip to remove old stubs. What it does, it bites into the wood, leaving a bit of a hollow, a depression. And this depression is very easy for the maple to cover with bark. So this way I facilitate the healing of the old stubs. Um, I'll do that now. Basically you just go through the whole tree and you remove all the stubs that you don't want. And at the same time I look at junctions where there's more than two branches occurring at any point. There's not that many of them in this tree, but let me do that now.
What we see here is an uh, interesting part of the tree. We have two branches on either side here and you have two branches here. So the consideration could be that you say I remove this one growing inwards, I leave that one. Then I remove one of these as well, probably this one, and then I grow on with those. Or you could say I would like to create some taper. I'm going to remove this part and I'm going to work with these two branches. And in fact that is what I'm going to do here. The reasoning is I want taper and I want thin elegant branches in the top of the tree. So these are still young, I can move them into position. And this is a fairly small cut for a Japanese maple. This will heal within the next couple of weeks. I don't need to do anything, I can just leave it alone like this and let the branches grow and it will heal. Once done, I'm going to look at this very old cut up here. Um, the tree will probably be styled in this direction with this branch going to the side as it has a bit of a droopy habit and I want to cut this off. For carving I'm just using a commercial rotary tool. Um, one of the problems is that if you buy these they have in the store very nice carving bits. But these are made for dry wood and they're really not suited for the work that we're going to do now. What I use, I actually ordered something called bonsai nibblers. And they are made in the UK by a friend of mine, Chris Guys, And you can order directly from him if you're in the UK or somewhere else. Um, I'll put a link to his website down below in the description. And you have these for big shaft or for small shaft rotaries. And in this case I'm using a small shaft rotary blade. I remove the clamp that was there and then on this you can just wire it on. The benefit of this attachment is that it removes large chunks of wood very fast. There's also a downside to that of course. Be careful using it. You really need eye protection, you need to hold the tool with both hands and you need to secure the tree that it can't move so you're not tempted to grip it. I guess I'll go and clean up a little bit before I wire the tree. Covered with cut paste to help the wound to heal. So during the cleanup I also took the opportunity to plant the tree in a different angle. Mind you, I only changed the angle, I just pulled it out of the pot, added some substrate and put it back down. But now the tree and its nabari are in the pot the way it should grow in the future. I'm not very happy with it, although what I now have is that the biggest trunk also gets the highest point of the canopy and these side branches are the lower points. It does give me a thought that I should maybe at some point remove this branch. But for now, let's just wire this one out. With half of the tree wired it is quite clear to see what a difference the wiring makes. Here the branches are all arranged in a sort of a pad and as said, the branches are slightly cascading. Um, on this side, the branches have not been wired and they are straight. They go in all directions and there's no consistency in the canopy yet. When wiring out a plant, um, keep in mind that you don't go against the natural tendency where possible. So if you have a species like this one that is of a weeping variety, use that and wire the branches and the canopy in a weeping shape. Similarly, if you have a species that typically grows straight up with fairly long straight branches, do not try to go against that. Um, what you can tell now is I'm going to pull these closer and I'm putting tiny little bends in. Particularly try to put bends in at the places of the internodes. That way the branch will have more movement than you'd normally get by just regular cut back. This is the benefit of wiring over just using cut and grow. You can also get movement in areas that are normally quite straight. This one I'm going to bend to the right, then coming a little bit to the left because it is on the 
left hand side here of the tree. Actually I've bent it to the left for you, the right for me. And that way you keep an open view to the top of the canopy and all the branches move away from the viewer when looked at the tree from the front. Now as it is the top of the tree, I don't need all that long growth. When growing out maples, um, the internode length is always important. So what you can tell here is that at the beginning of the growing season, you have a very short internode often at the beginning of the branch, but then very quickly they stretch to, well, this is probably five, six centimeters, two inches. What it means is branches can only grow from the nodes itself. So there is buds here in the connection between the leaf and the branch and here. In between, there are no buds. So if you want to cut this branch and you cut it right here, this will die back all the way to here because this is where the first buds are. This is the only point where it can sprout a new branch. This is it for now. The dropping branches now have been used to the full effect. I have a large pad here, a small dome, a pad here and a pad here, another small dome and another small dome. And over the course of the season, I'll let this one run wild, fatten up helping close this wound and I'll keep the rest of the tree quite sm small so that this canopy might eventually grow over the whole tree become maybe 10-15 centimeters as tall.